Hey, everybody. Welcome. Well, so, I'm Bree. And I am Glenn. And welcome to the Musical Quarantine Stream. Yes. We are on week 562. It feels like it sometimes, <laughs> yes. And uh, we are coming at you with our second week of mm. Disney shows. Yes. Um, mine has been sequels. Yes. <laughs> because I love certain franchises. So um, last week I talked about Descendants and how much I love Descendants mm -hmm. and how I would basically give my right arm to write for uh, their very wicked royal wedding. Yes. <laughs> and uh, this week mm -hmm. um, I'm going to talk about Teen Beach Movie, which is another franchise I really enjoy. Um, I'm going to do things a little different. We went back, we, we didn't watch two because two has some great songs, but, um, it's not my favorite. So we went back yeah. and watched one and I think I would do like an alternate two or a three if they want to go back to. It's all right to say, it's all right to say that it would be three. Lots of, lots of franchises Hi, have uh, gone. Hello, Bristol. <laughs> lots of franchises have gone. Hello, Bristol. Uh, but lots of franchises have popped in with a sequentially numbered piece and just been like, well, the last sequel didn't happen. I mean, even Star Trek did that. <laughs> well, good. Yeah, so. I don't feel like I'm like, you know, doing anything illegal. <laughs> and I'm, yeah. I'm kind of like following a pattern. Yes. Um, haven't done a whole heck of a lot of catching up on theater or anything like that. Unfortunately for us, we are still waiting to hear on mm -hmm. the status of our play that we submitted for the corn. Yeah. Uh, was it? Quarantine Bake Off. <laughs> Quarantine Bake Off. Uh, turned into an yeah. old lady. And um, honestly, what a lot of our entertainment has been, has been the sort of relaxing television. So uh, Disney Plus yeah. has a show called uh, Shop Class. Yeah, we watched that. That yeah. was fun. And then The Big Fib was fun. Mm -hmm. um, you watched something on HBO Max today. Craftopia. These are these are all reality competition shows. The Big Fib is basically um, uh, what's my line, but with child contestants. Yeah, it was, and, it was yeah. really good. Um, I think that that one was really fun. A lot of these things kind of remind me of Nickelodeon in the nineties. Yeah. So kind of growing up during that time and watching them was like really fun. And the prizes are great for some yeah. of these things, like. Shop class, they get a whole like standing case of tools, yeah. and Craftopia, they got like thousands of dollars. Like, yeah, it's, it's like the, the winner of every episode of Craftopia gets like five thousand dollars. That's yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, Craftopia and Shop class are both competitions where teenagers build things, yeah. which they're both fun shows. Yeah. Yeah, I also say, I uh, I just took a shower <laughs> before <laughs> streaming. Um, we've still been fixing up the apartment, at condo, whatever, whatever we live in. Um, and we went out to Lowe's. We thought super early. Like, we got up yeah. at, like, 7, like, we were out there at 7.30. Like, yeah. we got coffee, and then we went straight there. There's, like, a million people at Lowe's. Yes. <laughs> I think Lowe's is the only thing that's been open up during the whole quarantine, and people just go in. Yeah, and um, everybody who's staying home is looking around and saying, oh, I could finally fix that door. Right. So, so we're kind of looking at some options. Um, we have about 900 square feet here, which is, um, you know, pretty big, um, but not, I think, as big as we'd like. Yeah. Um, we're certainly used to going into quadruple digits. <laughs> <laughs> so we're trying to fix storage solutions. So we went out and we've been building storage, and we've been putting in shelf liners and all those good things, like before you kind of get to the actual moving in of moving yeah. in. So that's been taking up a lot of time. Um, even though I started my furlough like three days ago, um, I feel like we've just been busy since then. Yeah. You can always fill up your day full of stuff as I'm sure retired folks know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I still have to kind of like do do office meetings, stuff like that. So when I come back, but um, had some had some good luck. Yeah. My, my old job from 2019, when we left Ohio, sent me like a back paycheck. So, yeah. fur furlough's going great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm still missing out on like a paycheck, which is like not not the best thing in the world. Right. But um, I feel like my guardian angel's like looking out for me. Yeah. Like, so uh, it was a pretty good day today. My mom sent me a present for the cats, which was mm -hmm. great. So I, I think that even though we're not doing, like, theater stuff, I think we're still using all of our theater skills. Yes. Uh, talking to folks and 
building things. <laughs> and we're trying to encourage our villagers on our Animal Crossing <laughs> Island to actually use the theater that we built for them. I'm building them a library. Nobody uses that either. Yeah. <laughs> now, granted, the sad thing about Animal Crossing, if you don't know, like, I'm not a big video game person. I've really gotten into it again. Mm. Like, when I was little, I played all the Super Mario and all the Zelda and Bubble Bobble. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, like, the extent of, like, things I like to play. Um, I did some casual gaming. Like, you know, mm. grad school, like, I like the escape room stuff. But now I'm kind of getting into it since we, we have the Switch. We've had the Switch for a long time. And um, we've, we've been able to get a game here or there just yeah. whenever, you know, we've we've been able to be lucky enough to have, you know, some extra cash to kind of, like, throw around, which has been nice. Um, so what we've done is we bought Animal Crossing. We've kind of played it since day one, since mm. we got it. And I kind of been the mayor of the island because <laughs> I'm bossy and I was like, I want to do this. Um, so we did well, all the things that Animal Crossing says you should do, but then you get, I don't want to say you get bored, but like, I was like, I want a theater and mm. I want a restaurant and I want, you know, I want all these things to be part of like my, my utopia life. And so now I've just been building things outside, but the sad thing is, is you can't like build a building. You can't like yeah. put a roof over it. So it's like outdoor library, outdoor theater, <laughs> outdoor cafe. And the game does have weather that uh, sometimes eerily syncs with your outside weather. Yeah, it's been raining for a long time on our yeah. crossing. But um, but I will say, and and to Bree's credit, you know where she talks about like, oh, I'm the mayor because I'm bossy. Uh, she did not realize when she started the game that we would actually wind up playing on the same island. <laughs> like she thought she was going to have her island and I have my island and we can visit each other's islands and that sort of thing. And no, when you share a Switch and you share the game, you share the same island. Yep. So I've been basically on the island kicking back fishing and catching bugs and things while she builds the museum. Uh, and also to Bree's credit, She's a phenomenal community planner. So, <laughs> yes, I today I put in a Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton mm -hmm. in the playground because that was something like as probably a ten year old I would have dreamed yes. of, like climbing all over Tyrannosaurus and, Rex skeleton. And there she has a uh, a spot on the island that has Godzilla and a giant butterfly. So she basically has Godzilla and Mothra yeah. uh, in a spot where you can stop and take a photo with them. So, yeah, I, I would live on the island that Bree created. So. I always say that that's like the Twilight Zone thing is I, I'd love to live on our island as well. <laughs> but I would like go to the library and I'd be like, it's paint. It's all paint. It's not books. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like there there's like a Jordan Peele movie in this. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably what he's writing over quarantine. It'll, be, it'll make a million. It'll be great. Animal uh, Crossing, the movie by Jordan Peele. Peaches! Everybody peaches! Um, but no, we, we really enjoy that. So um, we, we've kind of just been doing YouTube and yeah. Animal Crossing and working. <laughs> yes. Reintroduced me to the Try Guys, which she mentioned when we were talking about my ideas for the BuzzFeed Unsolved uh, musical. Uh, Try Guys are absolutely phenomenal. I feel like everyone should watch at the very least the Try Guys DUI series. Yes, it's so good. I was like, if yeah. I was teaching middle school and high school health, I would show this for sure. They mm. drive sober. They then drive drunk. They drive um, high. Now, this is all on a closed course. So before yes, everyone's all, like, what are you watching? <laughs> all on a closed course, all with supervision. Yeah. All with somebody actually, like, scoring them to be like in a real world situation this would have been bad news sort of thing yeah and but they also go with um sleep deprived and yeah. they go with texting yes. and what's really kind of surprising i think is while the things that we expect there are going to be pretty you know harmful towards your impairment of driving a car being drunk and being stoned um the sleep deprived and the texting were like the worst yes. it was very scary and i think that you know, um, uh, a lot of people drive like that all the time and think, oh, I'm going to get away with it. But having worked in yeah. vehicle research and crash research, like, I, I thought it was a really good yeah. example. And to be four guys that I think have a successful YouTube channel and people look up to and, like, little kids might watch it, you know. Yeah. So. And the sleep deprivation was a particularly scary one because, as they pointed out, like, the first two in the series, Drunk and Stone, they're like, if you drive drunk or stone. You made the decision to drive drunk or stoned, but driving sleep deprived is something 
People do all the time. Lots of people have done because they feel compelled to do so because they didn't get enough sleep and they have to get to work or something like or that. Or you're coming home from a long yeah. shift or you have a baby or... Yeah, and scary. driving while texting is when one of them actually drove straight through a wall. So, yeah. you know, it's... Yeah. It, it's a... that That's a pretty... Uh, hello! Is that, that's Kelly, right? It is Kelly. That's Kelly. Yeah. Hi, Kelly. Nice to see and you hi, joining us. And hi, baby Wally. And <laughs> hi, Jarrett. And hi, the whole family. Yes. <laughs> I love looking at all of her pictures online. <laughs> she, has the, she has the best quarantine. Kelly has the best quarantine. Yes. She wins. <laughs> but yeah, the, the Try Guys is a phenomenal series on YouTube. I recommend it to anyone. And they do not just the serious stuff like that, but they've also done very silly stuff like building Ikea without instructions, which... I worked for Ikea. I got to a point where I could build a lot of the things without instructions. I would have not have tried to build the thing they picked to yeah. build. It, yeah, I made him build bathroom shelves today, but he had instructions. <laughs> yes. So, yes. Um, but yeah, no, Try Guys have been kind of my favorite, like, bright spot. I think between the rain and getting furloughed, it was all like, mm. oh, I don't feel well. <laughs> <laughs> and so kind of watching them and watching Puppet History, which is another one of my favorites. Yes. Um, and, and they only have four Puppet History episodes, so I make Glenn rewatch them a lot. So, <laughs> um, I enjoy those a lot. And I think, I, I told Glenn, I said, I think for me... Some of my favorite, like, masculine heroes were, like, Jim Henson and Mr. Rogers and Bob Ross yeah. and Steve Irwin. Like, all these kind of, like, really great examples of, like, masculinity not being toxic. And I feel like um, the way the Try Guys kind of run their, their stuff is they donate to Planned Parenthood and they do a lot of things that women are subjected mm -hmm. to, but men aren't. And they really have kind of like a nice, it, it's, it's still bro -y, but they still have a nice relationship. They really care about each other. Yeah. They really care about other people. It's one of those things where they're very highly competitive with each other. You know, when they try something like knitting or something like that, they get very much into the, my thing is going to be so much better than your guys' things. But it's also very loving and supportive and helping each other out. And also being like with the knitting episode, mm -hmm. they actually made presents for each other. Yeah. So it's also like, well, you're a really stylish modern guy, so I knitted you a bow tie sort yeah. of thing. But it's really, really sweet. And so I, I really like seeing that type of example of, you know, masculine in a positive way. And, like, one of the things, like, we also kind of talked about is sometimes they get a little loud. <laughs> and sometimes loud is hard for me. Um, I told Glenn, sometimes I just feel like everybody's yelling at me. <laughs> it was, there's one of the members, Keith, yeah. who a big part of his, like, act yeah. is, you know, usually during an episode, he'll get completely flustered and scream. Yeah. But it's very funny. And yeah. I said, there's, there's not a lot of people who can kind of pull that gag off and you're like, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm enjoying the joke with you and yeah. not scared of you. <laughs> I, I said, the thing that makes it work is that Keith uh, basically screams while smiling. So, <laughs> And also, uh, I pointed out today, I was like, oh, he actually also looks like a very young Fred Gwynn. So yeah. I was like, if I ever need a Herman Munster for a TV series, that's the guy. Yeah, so that's what we've really been enjoying. I wish we could say we have, like, a bigger theater thing. But we have talked about where we're going to go and yes. what we're going to do. So, actually, you know, driving back from Lowe's with our successful haul of <laughs> shelf, shelf liners. liners and, <laughs> Basically yeah. shelf liners. Shelf liners, so sample shelf chips for paint. I don't know how we bought so many shelf liners and we don't have that many shelves. <laughs> and I messed it up. So, I had to, like, buy one thing of shelf liners just to, like, mess up because I would be, like measure it and cut it and it would be wrong somehow and i don't know how that <laughs> happened it's fine the yes. shelf liners are in the shelf tomorrow dishes yes <laughs> so we're coming back and i said well what would be like the next big thing musical theater we kind of tried that a little bit with youtube channels yeah and you know we kind of made a little bit of a list yesterday because we're like well what else are we going to do we haven't really done books and i have like i love historical figures mm -hmm. so Again, like, I want to do kind of my own take on Hamilton and who would I do and, yeah. you know, that type of stuff. And we thought maybe Glenn had a great idea. Mm -hmm. Podcasts. I yeah. really like that idea because I would love to do, and this is probably going to be a future episode, Welcome to Night Vale. Yes. <laughs> <The> musical. <laughs> I think that's kind of sells itself. Um, 
like maybe apps or video yeah. games or something because there was the emoji musical that came yeah. up after off broadway and so we're like well if they're gonna do mm -hmm. emojis you know as a concept for a musical okay um and then and then i came up with i said well i said i'm not sure it's a direction we want theater to go but it's a very likely direction for theater to go and that's musicals based on brands so like mm -hmm. It's especially after COVID-19, theater, professional theater is going to need an infusion of cash. So I could totally see Apple computers being like, hey, we'll commission you to do a musical. We'll pay to produce the musical and everything. And you can do it about any subject you want, as long as it makes Apple computers look great for people to buy. And I think, like, there's a fairly famous documentary, I think it's called Bathtubs yeah. Over Broadway, and that's all about kind of, like, what um, Broadway yeah. actors did kind of on the off-season, yeah. where they would go and they would do these corporate musicals, or mm -hmm. we kind of talked about the Carousel of Progress, sponsored yeah. by DuPont or GE or something in yeah. a... Hey, uh, Lola's here. <laughs> Hi, Lola. Yes. Um, in Disney World, like, they would have sponsors by Kodak, and then yeah. they would, like, you know, sing a little song and talk about, oh my gosh, this camera is really great and that's yeah. the future. And so we're thinking, well, yeah, that, that seems probably fairly legitimate. Um, mm -hmm. With uh, There's a real struggle for funding. Yeah. Um, a lot of people want to like recoup on their investment. It's really, really hard to have the, kind of these like, you know, original works as much as like, I love to see original works, but I definitely understand from a producer perspective why they're not yeah. being done. So yeah, if the money's up front to be like, okay, we don't necessarily want to see a historical thing about the Ford automobile or Henry Ford or something, but maybe just the advancements of Ford. Or, I don't yeah. know. It, it or, seems or think of, If you're familiar <coughs> with Riff Tracks and Mystery Science Theater, which most of our regular audience is, um, you think of all of the industrial shorts that they do during yeah. those, like the Kitchen of Tomorrow and all the that. Pork. And I'm like, yes, the three magic words for pork. Look for quality freshness and flavor you, you just figure that extended out over a two-act uh structure and yeah and i'm like and it's just going to fall to writers and producers to be creative and create something that is fun for audiences where audiences don't feel like i just paid 60 bucks in order to sit in a theater and see a two and a half hour long commercial I don't know. And like I said, I, when he first said it, I was like, oh no, I don't, I don't know about that. But then I was like, you know what? I'm kind of a sucker for a good song. Like I also yeah. said no to SpongeBob the musical. Now I listen to it like every other day. So I, I mean, tell me, I, you could sell me on stuff. <laughs> tell me you absolutely, absolutely would never buy a ticket to see basically Zeusical, but with all of the General Mills cereal mascots. Yeah, I'd probably. <laughs> I was like, I love new things though, so I feel yeah. like I'm I'm an easy sell on this type yeah. of stuff. But you know, we're talking about like, well, what are we gonna do next? So I think that we've already decided we're probably gonna do podcasts. Yeah. I think we really like that idea. Um, we might go back and do some more YouTube, but we've kind of planned everything out until like July fourth. Yes. <laughs> and then from from there, we do have to do some kind of like planning mm -hmm. and you know on july 4th we're gonna be watching hamilton yes. so we hope yes. all of you are as well <laughs> so we'll probably do a show on july 1st that's kind of a one-off and if you have any suggestions let us know in the chat or in the comments um mm -hmm. you know we'd be happy to kind of do a, a special we can do an educational special yeah. we can talk about you know if you're interested in getting into theater how do you buy yeah. rights uh, if you want to we're, talk about playwriting you know. we were discussing a possibility as well if you remember very early on, we did Tweet Tweet Birdie. Mm -hmm. uh, we Doing just, a live tweet? We just discovered that there's a new, that there's a feature we can use on Twitch where if you are an Amazon Prime uh, member. Which most of us are. Yeah. Uh, we can if actually you're not, share. You're not in. We can actually share an Amazon Prime movie with you. And the way it works is like you guys would tune in as you usually do to watch us. And. The main screen where you're watching us now would be the movie, and we would be in like a little window Thanks. up above the chat room, Very so we ish. could yeah, <laughs> so we could uh, so we could chat with you guys and everything 
during the movie and all actually sit and watch a movie together. Yeah. And if that's the thing you guys would be interested in, Kelly is down for that. Uh, we've already looked at the selection of musicals and seen a few possibilities, including, uh, Bristol will be happy to hear this, Paint Your Wagon is on Amazon Which I've Prime. never seen! Yeah, so we could actually do, like, a watch-along of Paint Your Wagon for any of our folks who want to tune in who have Amazon Prime. Yep. So, so I think it sounds cool. I think it sounds fun. We were looking for something to do as a one-off. So, yeah. Yay! I was like, that's, we we have one approval. That's all, all right. I need. <laughs> all right. So, uh, but we need to now get into the pitch. Pass the hand. Yes. Okay. One of my favorite musicals is Teen Beach Movie. Yes. It is a silly musical. Again, like everything that Disney does, Disney original movies, they are silly. Yeah. Like you got to just like let it go. Yes. Um, the original Brad in Rocky Horror, mm -hmm. uh, Barry Bostwick. He is in it as the grandfather who yes. has a bungalow on the beach, has this surf shop, and his granddaughter, Mackenzie, she goes by Mac, uh, is living with him. Apparently, there's this weird rule where only through the first half of high school, because the yeah. second half of high school, then she has to go to a serious place with yes. her aunt. Um, and then she has this boyfriend named Brady, mm -hmm. and Brady and the grandfather love this musical called Wet Side Story, mm -hmm. which is not a real musical, don't go yes. looking for it, but it's called Wet Side Story, and it's basically a Frankie Avalon and Nat Funicello spoof, which makes a lot of sense for Disney, because that was Disney's bread and butter back then. Yeah. And, um... It essentially starts there, and Mac hates musicals, and Brady loves them, and she goes out on the very last day before she has to accept her fate and responsibility of becoming a serious person mm -hmm. to go surf a 40-foot wave in yes. a storm, and she, I guess, falls off her board, or something happens, and Brady goes yeah. out there with her, and then when they come up from the surf, they're in the musical. Yeah, they are actually <laughs> landed on the beach from Wet Side Story with all of the characters running around doing a musical number. And Wet Side Story, if you don't or haven't already guessed, is a parody of West Side Story, mm -hmm. but instead of sharks and jets, there is uh, the Rodents, which yeah. is a biker gang, mm -hmm. <laughs> Disney biker gang. Yeah. And um, I don't know if the surfers have a cool name, but the surfers. I think they're just the surfers, yeah. And uh, Tanner, who is the head of the surfers, and Layla, mm -hmm. who is the sister of the head of the Rodents, they are star-crossed lovers, and mm -hmm. they have to get together, and it's a, it's, yeah. 1960s bikini beach comedy. And I've got to say, uh, the first time I watched it with Brie, like I was very... And I was sitting the whole time like... I, I was really enjoying <laughs> the movie, but I was being like, I really wish though that they worked harder to get the original beach movie look kind of thing. Uh, I've softened on that a lot now and I really, really love the movie. But I will say for those of you who know those old movies... Um, the guy who plays the leader of the rodents is doing a phenomenal job being Eric Von Zipper. <laughs> so he really he, he's he's a he's a big like Disney lead hunk type of actor, but he's really really reflecting the style of the like short comic relief biker from all of the beach blanket movies. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's essentially what it is. Mm -hmm. What ends up happening is Mac and Brady end up getting involved, and the leads fall in love with them, and they have to, like, you know, they get have them to, out of love. Yeah, they have to try to be like, no, don't fall in love with me. Fall in love with the other lead of the movie that you're supposed to fall in love with. Otherwise, this whole chain of events won't happen, and we won't be able to get back home. And there's a couple of added stakes. So yeah. there is a B story, which there is less Cam and Bear. <laughs> and I forgot the doctor's name. Uh, basically Kevin Chamberlain, who, yeah. if you know Kevin Chamberlain, he's been in a lot of Disney stuff. He was also Uncle Fester on Broadway for Adam's Family. He was also Horton Hears a Who and Seussical on Broadway. Mm. So he's a very, very well-known Broadway actor, yeah. can sing like a high E, like he's yeah. really like an amazing singer, um, and he plays an evil mad scientist, and the reason why those villains are there is they are going to put an end to biking and surfing and steal their prime beach hangout spot to turn to condos. Yes. And so that's kind of like the B side of the story. Yeah, and it's supposed to be like the couple who fall in love manage to rally everybody after they discover the evil plot is happening. And they, by destroying the machine, 
actually allow the storm to happen that we'll be able to send them back home, send our main duo from the real world back home. But if they don't fall in love with each other, they don't go to the lighthouse together, they don't overhear the evil scheme, the weather machine wrecks the storm and they can't get back home. Yeah, and the other added element of danger is if yes. they don't go back home, they're going to be kind of incorporated into the movie. Yes. Which is, like, really, really, really bad. So there's a scene... They want to go home. <laughs> yeah, there's a scene where they start realizing, oh, no, our hair has stopped getting wet when we get into the water. Yes. Whenever we come out of the water, our hair looks perfect. Yes. Oh, no, when we go surfing, we look like we're surfing in front of green screen, you know? <laughs> that yeah. sort of thing. But I really like it because I like the silliness of it. If you catched, caught, caught catch, <laughs> grammar, <laughs> um, if you caught the sentence of last week, you just know, like, I suspend a huge amount of disbelief. I, you know, my disbelief is just up there in the stratosphere. You know, I just, if I enjoy a good song, I, I enjoy silliness. It doesn't bother me that it's so silly. Um, also, there's Jordan Fisher, and I really like Jordan Fisher. I like him in everything that he's done. He was in the Live Grease and was, like, the best thing about Live Grease, and he was on Dancing with the Stars, yeah. and um, he has albums out that I really, really like. And um, anyway, so it's like he, this was, like, one of his first movies where he mm -hmm. plays like a guy named sea cat so i think it's just kind of like nice to be yeah. like oh I've, I've liked this actor for a long time it was yeah. kind of cool to see him and, grow up. uh brady is played by he was in what was it alley yeah. and aj was and the, he's ross lynch and he's on the chilling adventures of sabrina yes, he's, he plays as uh, sabrina's boyfriend in the chilling yeah. adventures of sabrina yeah and so he he's a very good performer as well it yeah. took a while He's one of those guys I feel like it took a while for him to grow into himself. Yeah. But now he's really doing really well. And in Teen Beach Movie, he's fun. He's a good dancer and a good singer and everything. Yeah. So. Um, and from what I've heard is this is probably like Teen Beach Movie 1 is already a stage show for kids. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't done Kid Summer Theater in a long time, so I can't really verify that. But I have, I guess seen clips online mm. uh, so maybe people just did it um nobody can... posts unauthorized video of musicals online oh. do they they don't that's not a thing uh i mean we have certainly been on the fringes <laughs> of a town where it was very very common for them to just be like this isn't frozen it's called frozen heart and it's <laughs> not anna but it's annika and it's not Elsa, but it's Elsica. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say what all that was, but it certainly happened in a theater community where we used to live. Yes, yes. <laughs> it was a thing. Mm -hmm. So um, so I, I feel like this is a stage show. If, I'm not, if it's not a stage show, it's, it's mm -hmm. definitely beloved by, by younger kids. It's a kind yeah. of a tween movie. Um, but anyway... Love it. It's it's gross. It's silly. It's fantastical. It's really super great. But what I kind of don't like about what they did between one and two is two, they went, well, you know what's popular is high school musicals. So let's yes. make them go to high school. Because yeah. <laughs> that's what I like is a whole movie about being on the beach. Let's make them go to high school. Yes. It, it's absolutely. Why not? And in the process, they rewrote a lot of the story of the characters from the first movie. Yeah. They ignored everything that they had done at the end of the first movie. And like Bree says, they took it off of the beach where you were having fun and having like an interesting story and everything like that and put it into a high school and tried to make it into a much more like, it's still silly, but it's a much more dramatic storyline. Yeah. And it's like, it's a very serious thing. Like basically two of the movie characters come out and one is like, you know, I, I just don't belong here. Like, I'm a movie character. I want to go back to the movie. And the other one is like, I want to be like the first female scientist and you're denying me my education and how dare you. And these are all really important issues. Yeah. I'm not saying that having a, a feminism uh, element of your musical is not important. But I am saying it's like, those are really two different desires and conflicts mm -hmm. in one. So it's like, you can't fault somebody for being like, I don't fit in the real world. I want to go home. And somebody saying, yeah. like, you're ruining my life by you wanting to go home. And I'm like, oh, that's that's hard. That's, yeah. that, that's hard for me as it's, an adult to, you know, justify. I think it would be hard as a, as a teen or a teenager yeah. to kind of justify as well. Because, like, 
I yeah, I want girl scientists too. I am a girl scientist. I work yeah. with blood and do lab tests all day. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I, I it, don't know. It, a... it just was real heavy. And even mm -hmm. though as I think as much fun as it is to see all these characters go to prom or whatever, it certainly wasn't the the direction I thought it was going to go in. Especially paying homage to nineteen sixties beach bunny movies. Yeah. So uh, so I think it's safe <coughs> to say, and we've already mentioned this before. Bree's concept for Teen Beach Movie 3 begins by saying Teen Beach Movie 2 didn't happen. Sorry. It's, you know sorry, what? not sorry. We're, we're going to do like Kelvin verse. <laughs> yeah. that Teen Beach Movie 2 was created by an anomaly. It's an alternate universe. It's over to the side. That's a different story. Different universe. Let's get back to the universe from the first movie again. So my whole thing after watching Teen Beach Movie 1 about a million and a half times, because it's another movie that I just like to turn on. I love to sing it. Um, like one of my favorite kind of, it's not really a joke in the movie, but it's a joke to me, is they have a reprise of a song called Meant to Be. Yes. Like four times. <laughs> and so you just hear it like an awful lot. And um, there's a little bit where it's like, um, Oh, I'll, I'll just sing it. I was like, we're not yeah. being monetized or whatever, but, um, but it's meant to be, it go kind of crazy. <laughs> and yeah. it's like, it's that kind of song. But then there's like the ending part. It's like, there's a little, I would say it's like hair. Yes. <laughs> it's like flower tone. And I always like singing that because it's like, we're meant to be. <laughs> Like Glenn and Bree. <laughs> so when Glenn's driving in a car, I like yes. to play this song and bother him. Yes, or any, keep him awake or anytime, whatever he needs as a navigator with singing in his face. Yes, anytime <laughs> I'm driving grumpy, she does this to cheer me up. So, <laughs> so I really love this. It's, it's just really schmoopy and just yeah. silly and syrupy and I, I love it. Yeah. So anyway... Um, when I was thinking about, well, what would I want to see in a sequel? So, number one, I do want the villains to come back because there's the end at the villains where the doctor, mad scientist, have found out uh, one of the girls happened to tell him, hey, you're in a movie. And yeah. he's like, I'm in a movie? And he, like, looks at the camera and he's like, oh, I am in a movie. And, yeah, he realizes and it, like, stuns him for a second as he's just staring directly into the camera. Yep. And uh, then he tells the other evil man, like, hey, you, did you know we're yeah. in a movie? And he peels off his mustache. <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah. cool. Tell, it, tell me more about how we're in a movie. And I thought, wow, that'd be, like, really fun if the villains were kind of, like, they could exploit that. Knowing yeah. that they were in a movie and that they, they knew that there was this power of... Well, if we get Mac and Brady to stay, yeah. then it changes everything, and we could actually win. And mm -hmm. you know, like I, I think I'd like to see that. I'd like to see almost a bit of a rehashing, which mm -hmm. they kind of did for Teen Beach Movie too, because one of the songs, um, the day started ordinary, mm -hmm. boys passing by, they they flipped it, so uh, a boy sang, you yeah. know, the that part, and then a girl sang another part. Um, so I feel like, you know, it's not like that wasn't already in the cards for Teen Beach Movie right. 2, but I feel like totally saying, like, the villains have a chance to win this time. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that we've seen this in things like, um, Star Kid with the very Harry Potter musicals and stuff like that, or, um, the Starship Troopers one. Like, there's yeah. a lot, this is, like, a common trope in a lot of type of musicals where it's, like, especially if you're doing, like, a musical of an already known property, mm -hmm. is you can't go back and say, like, oh, but wait, if we yeah. just change X, Y, Z, you right. know? Or you kind of see, like, the B-roll to somebody's day, which I've seen in a lot of cartoons. Mm -hmm. So it's, like, there's the main adventure. It's, like, well, what did you yeah. do? Oh, I just stayed at home. And then you see, like, oh, they didn't stay at home. They had their yeah. own adventure. It's become very, uh, become very popular lately, especially in animated shows. Mm -hmm. That you have your main story, main characters and everything. And then the next episode or a couple of episodes down will be like a background character in that story. You get to see what their day was like yeah. and see that, they, oh, they had an adventure too sort of thing. So I like making that the focus. Is the villains realizing we're in a movie, we can exploit this, we could win. Yeah. So I like that as starting mm -hmm. for the sequel. Yeah. The other thing is there is a song mm. that they sing when they first get onto Musical World. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's uh, Surf Crazy. Mm -hmm. Surf, 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 surf crazy. Yeah. Um, number one, 
Okay, before I get into like my idea for musical, I'm sorry, tangent number one, yes. going this direction, is they say, wave high to the sky. So, but every single time, to me it sounds like, say hi to this guy. Hi guys. <laughs> and I said, if I ever staged this show, I would do it. <laughs> and they're like, surf on sand. It's a bikini wonderland. And then yeah. I was like, and then you see the guy in a itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my dream direction of Teen Beach movie. Mm. So putting that out there. Anyway, getting back to surf crazy. <laughs> They have a thing that I think is fairly common in it, or maybe it wasn't really common, but it is a fairly common kind of 1960s trope where it's mm. like, or at least um, Mickey Mouse trope. Let's yeah. put that. Hi, I'm Annette. You know? Yeah. That all of the characters introduce themselves in, in order that, you know, there's like, I'm Seacat. Tanner, you know, yep. they have a moment in the song where they all introduce themselves. Yeah, so there's this one character that we never hear from again. <laughs> yes. She's like, I'm Kiki, and we never see her again. She has no other lines, no other scenes or decks. Everybody else in that musical number has at least, like, one line somewhere else in the movie. Yep. If not, like, a scene where they get a joke to themselves. Yes. But Kiki, No. No, she's gone. She don't have no lines. You don't see her or anything else. So I said, this is Teen Beach Movie 3, Kiki's Revenge. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that it would be really fun if she would, like, pair up with the villains mm -hmm. and say, like, oh, I was supposed to have a lead and Max stole my song. And, you know, <laughs> I was supposed to do this and they ruined the whole musical last time. You know what? I love that idea that Max somehow, like, Something Mac did took away Kiki's role. Yes. <laughs> it's like, I was supposed to be Layla's best friend. <laughs> I was supposed to be invited to the Sully Bowler. <laughs> <laughs> and I just really liked that idea. Um, it makes it a little bit different. It kind of uh, kind of gives it new sentience because I yeah. think like they do understand at the end, like, oh, yeah, we're a movie. We like being a movie, yeah. you know. But you taught us girls can do anything boys can do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that that's where I would go. Now, granted, it doesn't change a whole lot of, I think, overall what the musical will be, but I think it adds a new element, adds a new dimension, and I think it kind of adds to that silliness and that fun yeah. that I really liked in the first one. And, like, you'd still have to solve a problem. I think you could say, like, okay, great, now now the movie is different. Like, maybe Mac and Brady are sitting down, they're watching this, this show for, like, a teenage date night, you know, mm -hmm. they're very Disney, sweet, innocent, yeah. eat popcorn, and they start realizing, like, oh, no, this is all different. Yeah. Like, you know, th this is, we have to go back. We have to save them. <laughs> <laughs> we have to save the musicals we now love together because Mac loves musicals now. And I think that that would also be really fun because I don't even think in two, she, she did kind of say, okay, we have to use the song to save people. But she's still kind of like, Rrr. so I think it was like having her be like, no, no, no! Like, th yeah. like this is this is meaningful to us. So she, these, these are our friends. We have to go in. Like yeah. we made friends with all these characters. Right. And Kiki, if I learned anything, you can solve something with a song. Yeah. And just see like the go. No, don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> Plug your ears. <laughs> I, I Quick, just, we need a song to counter the song. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> um, but I, th I think it just kind of fits with the whole thing because, like, some of my favorite moments in Teen Beach Movie are, like, the really goofy kind of elements where it's, like, they sing this, like, cute little, like, boys like girls and girls like boys <laughs> but they have like this really cool thing where it's like the whole stage folds down where it was like it mm -hmm. was like a changing booth and then it's like it folds down they're all like doo wop singers yeah <laughs> so like i really like that i think like you can only kind of really do that when you're like gonna suspend your disbelief wildly or when they're trying to break the machine mm -hmm. like some of the, the the things they do to break the machine is they go over to the professor's like chalkboard and erases notes yeah. <laughs> and like one girl has like her high heel and she's like banging on the machine as she like lazily chews gum <laughs> and so like as somebody who loves visual gags who loves that type of stuff i feel like i just wanted more of that yeah. and there wasn't a lot like when you have well gosh brady you're just not serious because you're building a self-propelled you know surfboard in your surf shack every day after school and i'm trying to go to college and it's like and wait that's a major engineering project that's <laughs> like 
How is he not serious? I don't understand. That's a patent that's going to be worth millions of dollars one day. So I was like, I feel like that the Teen Beach Movie 2 just kind of took it in mm -hmm. a much more serious, if they're yeah. still silly moments, much more serious direction that I would just like to kind of come back from where it's like the stakes are a little bit lower. It's mm -hmm. not, I'm forcing a movie character to go back to her role that she's always played and she'll never get to like learn how to repair motorcycles in the real world. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it, it just would be fun having kind of like, you know, this thing that we went in and we changed, it, it, it now has changed for everybody and they're not going to have the same experience that we had and on one thing, that kind of says a nice thing about theater, because theater is different every time yeah. you see it. But also, we do have favorite shows. We do have favorite lines. And I remember, like, when I was being taught of how do you memorize stuff, um, they would say a couple things. So, number one, like, you don't want to get the playwright mad at you. You mm -hmm. don't want to get the rights taken away. You don't want somebody to, like, be sitting in the audience and be like, I wrote that play and you didn't say what I said. Do you think you're better than me? <laughs> I wrote those words. You bought those rights. But on, an, on a nicer note is... You might be messing up somebody's favorite scene. Yeah. Somebody might be there. They've seen Shakespeare a hundred times, but they want to see this play again. And you're saying this speech. And if you can just say the words that are, are written, you're going to make that person's night, yeah. you know? And so I feel like that would be kind of the, the Teen Beach Movie 3 is maybe people don't know what they're missing because it's a whole different show. And mm -hmm. now there's this like weird character dynamic and like all these things are wonky and changing, but this is important to us. And we want to kind of create the thing we fell in love to. Yeah. You know? Well, and I could, <laughs> I, I'm imagining now because you talked about them watching the movie for like a teenage date night. And everything, I'm imagining the moment not being reacting to the movie but reacting to the commercial on the TV station promoting the movie is <laughs> like wet side story, the classic story of Tiki <laughs> and then being like, wait, who? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or like the classic story of like, you know, bikers on the surf. Like yeah. <laughs> we put a motorcycle on a surfboard. And it's amazing. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I just like, I just like the idea and of the bold real estate developer who Dared to stand up to the bikers. Yes, yeah. I think, like, having kind of that Twilight Zone, yeah. Doctor Who kind of, like, time travel kind of mistake, even though it's not really a time travel mistake, yeah. but, you know, because we've interfered with the movie... We've got to go back, back now. And, and it could even be something along the lines of what Teen Beach Movie 2 kind of flirted with, mm -hmm. which is the idea that once the characters were aware that they were in a movie... They could, they could decide not to play along with the movie. Mm -hmm. So you could even play with that idea a little bit of, like you said, the villains know they're in a movie. Kiki knows, learns that she's in a movie. But also you have the other characters being like, well, maybe I don't want to party at Ma's all the time. Maybe I don't want to... Maybe I want to go to college and not be a surfer. And it's like, look, though, this movie is just a small period of your life. Yeah. And it means so much to other people. Like, you could have that sort of conflict between things of not just the villains knowing we can exploit that we're in a movie, but also the protagonists of the film being like, what if I wanted to do something different? Yep. So I'd love to see that. Yeah. I know that this is not much of a pitch, mm -hmm. but I think for me, there's a lot of potential there. And I think that I, I could definitely see myself going back and rewatching and, yeah. and writing it. I don't think this is a franchise Disney's pursuing. I mean, no. I could be wrong. If you're out there yes. and, and, and you're on Disney Plus and you're currently writing Teen Peach Musical 3, let us know in the comments yes. below. Yes. <laughs> um, I'd love to see it. Yes. <laughs> I like it, show. If, you, if you comment and let us know that Teen Beach Movie 3 is actually being made, nobody will be happier than us. Yes. So. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, it seems like everybody's fairly older now and yeah. they're doing their own thing. So it's like they're definitely not going to get the original cast even if they do it. Right. But it's one of these things that I really enjoy it. I enjoy the silliness. I'd love to lean into the silliness. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's kind of like what makes it special because it's, I, I do like serious movies. I certainly watch a lot of documentaries and there's definitely days where I am sad and I like to watch sad things. Like, let's I, just be honest. I just like, it flashed into my mind a scene of them going to, I think it's Moz is the name yeah. of the club that they yeah. all hang out at. That like they get back into the movie, they go to the club and there's like two or three people in the club. There's nobody else. 
and they have to go find all of the other characters. And you could have, like, um, giggles yeah. being like, did you know this town has a library? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have read so many books. <laughs> that is the other thing, too, is Ma, like, has, like, one line, and she never comes back. Yes. And I was like, she needs a big number. Yeah, You know, there's just so many, like, under you. Well, when you have a big cast like that, yeah. and, like, it's supposed to kind of be, like, an homage to these things, yeah. you miss out on a lot of things. So I feel like it would just be a real fun time to have, like, the characters to, to shine a little bit more. And I think, like, they tried to do that in two, yeah. but... I would love to see it a little bit more. Yes. And like I said, one of the, the saddest things about two, when I was expecting to, the way they end one is a whole group of them come out yeah. of the movie and they end up in the real world. And then like when they open two, they're like, nope, it's just these two. And I'm like, oh, well, that's yeah. kind of a bummer. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. And there's an element to it, the way they end the first movie with the whole gang coming out of the water, that it's like. We totally did not expect to get dragged out of the movie like this. Yeah. Whereas the two characters who do come out of the movie in Teen Beach Movie 2, at least one of them like actually set out to be like, I am going to leave the movie now. Yeah, And I think the other one's like, I love you, so I'll go with you. <laughs> and that's... that's and a... they make him like, he's, he's pretty dumb, but they make mm -hmm. him like even dumber. Yeah. You know, and I was like... I feel like at least he had kind of, like, a good heart. Yeah. You know, like, he didn't have to be super, like, duper smart, but I was like, they make him real stupid. <laughs> yes. And, and, yeah, like Bree says, in the first movie, he's a character who's, like, dim, but a very good guy. Yeah. Like, and, he has a good heart, and he wants the best for people, but it's, like, I think, like, one of the scenes that is just, like, he goes up to, like, a waving... <laughs> like air creature and he's like Wah. <laughs> and I was like maybe that's like fun to play but it's like it really comes to like you know I d he's like I don't have anything except the movie and yeah. my, my weird voices and all that stuff and it's just like it's it's just very sad <laughs> yeah it's all sad all around this this girl can't get her like science education and become a motorcycle yeah. mechanic and he thinks he's a big dummy and he is a little bit but mm -hmm. not as much as he thinks and Max just wants to go to college, and Brady <laughs> just wants to invent surfboards, and <laughs> no one's happy. Yes. Just like real high school. I don't want to watch real high school. <laughs> let, let, let's take it back to the beach, make it fun. Yes. Yes. So that would be my plan. And then, like I said, giving everybody kind of like a chance to, to sing, who didn't get to sing. Yeah. You know, I think having kind of a, a, a more... Gosh, I really hate this because, like, Disney's not going to do this. But having kind of the adults get to have a little bit of a, a center stage. Yeah. Um, I know, like, all the cute boys and all the cute girls and teenagers and, oh, Disney original movie. Like, I but know what their bread and butter is. But still, like... Giving I, Barry Bostwick a little bit of a moment. Yeah, so like, I'd, I'd really like, you know, Mom to kind of sing about how she opened her shop or have a good, like, blues number mm -hmm. or torch yeah. song or something. I'd love the villains to have these, like... Gosh, you know what one of my favorite scenes is that I think would be a good villain thing mm. is, um, oh my gosh, in Pirates of Penzance. Yes. In the second half. Paradoxum, paradoxum, most ingenious paradoxum. <laughs> I would love that. Like, not that exact thing, although it is a paradox, but <laughs> if they would have that similar type of thing, because I'm just thinking like two guys and a girl, yeah. of course. Uh, fun little patter song about how this is all crazy and how we're going to have this whole plan. And mm. I just like Gilbert and Sullivan. Yeah. That, that, that's it for me. <laughs> yes, I, I have heard this story that Bree's dream job when, when she was a kid was doing all of Gilbert and Sullivan all the time. All the time, always. Or being yeah. a Muppet. Like, yes. not being a Muppeteer, but I was like, I do this really well. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and that's very Muppety. And yes. I think I could have, like, sold myself as, like, a human Muppet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or at least, like, you know, go on and, like, how, like, Madeline Kahn and, you know, yeah. Steve Martin. Like, I always say I kind of grew up in that, like, really fun era, like, right between, like, what was hip in the 70s and what was hip in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And so, like, um, one, of, one of the things I really liked was always, like, those big Hollywood roasts. And one of my favorite shows, and I know that Kelly knows this, is... Um, the Peter Easter Rabbit special, where they kind of like set it up like that. Here comes Peter Easter Bat. Um, so I like that type of stuff, and I feel like Teen Beach Movie kind of falls into that type of nostalgia yeah. that I didn't really participate in because a little kid, but things that I really were familiar with, like 
I know who Charo is. You yeah. know? So I, I would like that. I think like for me, like I, I'm now the middle aged audience. I I control the strings to my non existent children who will buy things from Disney. Make this musical for me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's it's a thing that Disney could return to. They've hit high school musical again. Which High School Musical, of course, was Disney's massive, massive success uh, in terms of like the made for Disney Channel and franchises. And people liked High School Musical, the musical, the series. Yes. Like, I really it's, liked that. <laughs> yeah, so, for those of you out there who aren't familiar, there might be one or two of you who are not familiar. There was High School Musical. There's Lola. <laughs> yes. She's like, you're done. Yes, Lola says I'm done. Uh, there's High School Musical... There was High School Musical 2, High School Musical 3, Sharpay's Fabulous Adventure. Then there was a stage version of High School Musical that was High School Musical The Musical. And now if you go on Disney+, Plus, they have an original series that's High School Musical The Musical The Series that's all about a group of kids in high school who are producing High School Musical The Musical for their high school. And they're being followed around like The Office. Yes, it's basically like The Office collides with High School Musical. Yeah. But at some point, they can't keep coming up with a new layer for <laughs> High School Musical. At that time, it's time to go back to Teen Beach Movie. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll be waiting for it. Yes. <laughs> so that's it. I mean, like, I just basically described the show. Definitely, if you have Disney+, Plus, go. you can go watch both of them, but definitely yeah. go watch one. Um, the, like the other thing I really like about Disney Channel, these are all like 90 minute type of thing. So it's like, you know, it, it's a good Pomodoro method. I've spent 90 minutes doing this time to do something else, right? Yes. So now I put on Big Hero 6. Okay, now I'm going to do something else. So I really like the, the 90 minute kind of blocks. It takes mm -hmm. me back to kind of college and coursework and that type of stuff. So for me, it's a really kind of like short, sweet little thing. It's not going to take much of your day. It's mm -hmm. a fun little movie. I think the songs are the best. My favorite is Make It Stop. Which yeah. is, um, yeah. <laughs> they, they're realizing they're becoming the movie. And so there's all these props and costumes and dancers and things. And they tap dance. And yeah. I, I really love that one. We sing that one together a lot as well in the car. I, I love it the beginning as, uh, as Mac is realizing to okay. her horror <laughs> that a musical number is starting and she's going to be participating. You have the guy who walks by, a very cheerful guy in like a Hawaiian shirt with a ukulele strumming the <laughs> opening chords. Yeah. And then as they get to the end of the song, there's a pause. And then you hear that intro again and the guy walks by and she just turns around and goes, No! <laughs> <laughs> yes. And he has a really realistic reaction of like, okay. <laughs> That's really fun. Like, what's going on? Yes. This can't be happening. Don't tell me. It's a song. It's a song. <laughs> This Here wasn't come. how I planned it. <laughs> it's adorable. Yes. Go see it right now after the show. If you, if I mean, it's nine o'clock now, so maybe not after the show. We're all yes. old people. But tomorrow, when you have time, <laughs> it's quarantine. What when else you, you wake do? up at five a.m. tomorrow, <laughs> go to Disney Plus. <laughs> I mean, you know what? You're an adult. You, yes. live, you live your life. You yes. don't need to listen to me. I was like, I'm just a person trying to build shelves on furlough. So. <laughs> All right, so so there's Teen Beach Movie 3, sorted. Yes. All right, so coming up this Saturday, we're going to do this again. Yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah, Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Join us here on twitch.tv slash C. Glenn Williams. That's him. That's me. And it's his and, pitch. Yeah, and it's going to be my pitch. And I have revisited a show that I realized after I selected it for doing a pitch I have not seen since I was like nine. Yeah. So I revisited it in order to get ready for my pitch and discovered that, oh, there's a lot I'm going to do to this story. And I fell asleep. Uh, <laughs> yes, she fell asleep halfway through. So I had to explain to her what I was going to change in addition to why I was going to change it. Uh, I had to like describe half of the movie to her. But I am going to be pitching a stage adaptation of the absent-minded professor. Hey. Yeah. This we, is the old 1956 version. Yeah. We couldn't find the one that we grew up with. Yeah, there was, uh, well, 
I, I used to watch the Fred McMurray version, but I loved, in the 80s, around 88, 89, they made two new movies with Harry Anderson as Professor Brainerd. And I loved those, but they appear to have evaporated. Like, I'm, I'm not going to say that I pirate anything. I do have my sources for when things are long out of print and nobody knows what happened to them, that I can usually dig up a copy somewhere. I cannot find the Harry Anderson Absent-Minded Professor anywhere. Disney Plus has not put it on their service. And believe me, I am tweeting at them, hey, this thing needs to be online. Uh, but we went back to the Fred McMurray version. I watched it, and I remembered a lot of things that I liked as a kid. Mm -hmm. And I also saw a lot of things where I'm like, that could have used a rewrite or two before they actually filmed it. <laughs> um, but it's still a very good, fun movie to watch. And I'm going to be talking about turning it into a stage show and hopefully one that will be more successful than the stage version of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang turned out to be. I so. love Raul Esparza, but I feel <laughs> bad that he doesn't have a good track record of picking musicals like Taboo and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and Leap of Faith and... Yes. But he's very talented and he's very good and he should have nice things happen to him. Yes. But, uh, but I will be talking absent-minded professor and uh, talking about how I would change it up, what I think it would work as on a stage musical sort of idea. And then after that, let's see, starting next week. Yes. We're going to be doing, uh, is that, did we say podcast? I think we said podcast. Yeah. So I picked, I'm going to be doing Welcome to Night Vale, of course, mm. and I'm going to be doing 99% Invisible. Yes. And I am going to be doing My Favorite Murder, and um, what was the other one I picked? You need to go get your paper. I need to go get my paper. <laughs> Hold on, we have a very valuable paper with our plans for the stream. <laughs> Yes, I was like, I told him I thought he was going to pick my choices. That's why I waited for, like, the last minute to pick mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he picked two completely different things that I would not have picked. Oh, yes, I remember what I picked now. <laughs> now that I've looked at the paper that, it, that I wrote it on. Dun, dun, dun. So I will be doing musical pitches based on... Oh, uh, Bristol is saying maybe it's in my Bristol storage locker. No. It, it has, the Harry Anderson, oh. Absent-Minded Professor, it has never been released anywhere as far as I can find. It was shown on television, but no VHS, no DVD, certainly not a Blu-ray. So I, I know it seems like I have every movie ever made <laughs> on DVD somewhere. It, it is not in the storage locker. Um, but uh, I'm going to be doing... My Favorite Murder, and Lore. So I'm, I think I'm going to have a fun time. Even though I Pretty forgot spooky. Lore was my second choice, <laughs> I am going to have a fun time pitching that one. So yes, Glenn is creepy and spooky. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, um, she but yeah. likes it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's it. Thank you so much for tuning into the Corn Stream. We look yes. forward to seeing you on Saturday, if not Saturday. We look forward to seeing you next week. We will keep doing this as long mm -hmm. as there is a pandemic. <laughs> yes, we are going to keep going and keep going. Maybe even past it, because it doesn't take that much to produce this. No. Yeah. No, this is fairly low budget. Um, yeah. Lola's really the most expensive thing. She's all CGI. we got to yes. animate that every week. It takes a long time. Yes, as... Uh, oh, is she CGI? I thought she was a Muppet. Man, I have got to stop that check to the Henson Company. All right. <laughs> but anyway, we love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's wonderful seeing you pop up in the chat. Um, come join us next time. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies. Tell, tell us what to do. I mean, you can, you can tweet us. You can leave comments. You guys all know us. So feel yeah. free to just, like, boss us around, and we'll create content yeah. you want to see and that keeps you entertained. Yes. And uh, we love you. Until next time that we see you, uh, you guys, you stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves because we're not there to take care of you. All right? Bye. Bye. I love you.